I'm Madison Holmes, and the author that I chose to do is Floyd Cooper. Floyd Cooper was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He currently lives in Easton, Easton, Pennsylvania, and is 50 years old. He has a wife named Thelma, who is also his agent. He has two sons. One is named Dayton, and who he really loves football. The other one is named Kai, and he loves um, music and art. He has over 96 children's books published. Not all of them he has written. Some of them he has just illustrated. Um, he's not only an author, but an illustrator as well. He has won many significant awards, such as the Coretta, um, the Coretta Scott King Award and the NAACP Award. Um, as I mentioned earlier, he was Floyd Cooper was grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. In 1956, they were ex um, his family was extremely poor, um, so he doesn't remember doing a lot, but he remembers his mom always telling him a bunch of stories, and he says that that grew his imagination, um, um, and it made his imagination wonder. Uh, he studied fine arts at the University of Oklahoma. Um, he was drawn, he, um, says he was drawn to books about, um, written about African Americans. Um, most of, most of the books had to do with some type of tragedy or a very heartfelt event. Um, the book I'm sharing with you today is called Max and the Tagalong Moon. Max and the Tagalong Moon by Floyd Cooper. <clears throat> One night, as Max was leaving Grandpa's house, he reached up to give Grandpa a big hug goodbye. In the sky behind Grandpa appeared a big, fine moon. Look, Grandpa, the moon. That old moon will always shine for you, on and on. Grandpa and Max gazed quietly at the big moon, together as it embraced them in soft yellow light. Max smiled at the moon and Grandpa, then climbed into the car. Bye-bye, Grandpa. Bye-bye, Moon. As the car pulled away, Max kept his eyes on Grandpa until he disappeared from sight, and all he saw was the moon. Max kept his eyes on that moon, waiting for it to disappear, too. The long ride home was swervy curvy, this way and that, all the way, and the moon seemed to tag along. Max giggled as he watched the beautiful bright orb flicker through the passing trees, trailing behind the car as it traveled home. This way and that, playing peekaboo. Up a hill, down a hill, the moon was ever there. Over a bridge, around a curve, the moon bounced along. Around a tree, past a field of sleeping cows, the moon stayed quietly with Max. Through a small town with roundabout streets, Max gazed as the moon kept up.
At the mouth of the tunnel and out the other end, Max smiled when he saw the moon there, waiting. Dark clouds tumbled across the night sky. The stars and nightingales all faded away. Max searched the darkness and wondered, Where's the moon? Grandpa said it would always shine for me. Finally home, Max took one last look up at the empty night sky. I guess that old moon couldn't shine for me all the way home. Upstairs in bed, the room was dark. Max felt alone. He missed Grandpa. He missed that tag-along moon. Then, slowly, very slowly, Max's bedroom began to fill with a soft yellow glow. The clouds faded away, and the moon peeked through. Max gazed up at that magic ball of light and thought about what Grandpa said. That old moon will always shine for me. On and on. Max knew when that when Max knew then that whenever he saw the moon, he would think of Grandpa on and on, and he slept soundly, embraced in soft yellow light. And that is Max and the Tagalong Moon. And an assignment that I would have my students do is um, to write a story of an example of someone who is always there for you, just like the Tagalong Moon was always there for Max in the book. And then after they write that story, I would have them illustrate it. And that is all. Thanks.